Sorry about the delay. There seems to have been a bit of a mix-up on time. So I'm going to give you 15 minutes or so on where the digital fabric is for the health system in Ireland and try and give you a bit of a flavour of what's happening. But if you can just indulge me first to just give you a bit of a story about what's happened over the last 18 months. So the guys at the back are just going to play a two-minute video. I promise it's only two minutes. If you kill the sound, actually, I'll talk over it. Typically, the thing stops working. Here we go. So we've been working on trying to change the way health is perceived across Ireland for the last 18 months, particularly around technology. How many people here knew that now in Ireland over the last 12 months we now do referrals electronically? So we've moved from doing referrals with paper to doing referrals as a digital process. And we haven't made any big noise about that. It seems almost crazy to think that in 2016, if you're in a hospital, you're referred, digital, you're referred with paper instead of with a digital solution. And that's now been replaced. Over the last 12 months, we've also put in place the, the bedrock for a spend in Ireland on an electronic health record. Over the next year, nine years, Ireland will invest 900,000 euro in digital health to try and change what is very much a paper process today into a solution that genuinely supports a digital fabric for healthcare, which is a, a big leap for any country to make, but our starting point is so far behind other countries. Ireland's the last first world country to not have an electronic health record. It's kind of a big, scary thing to say, but we're the last country that doesn't have the ability to have electronic health records. If we want to look at how we deliver health care, we need to have a digital solution. And the HSC, the Department of Health, and the Minister's Office are now working together to ensure that what we have in place is a digital solution to, to create all this. So later this year, the first national lab information system goes live. Can you believe that today we still prescribe drugs for cancer using carbon paper? Ireland's probably keeping some of the carbon paper industry alive and running. The numbers on the background there, though, show some of the things we've learned from other countries. Making Ireland's healthcare IT program be clinically led has been a big part of that. And Ireland now has 170 clinicians who work on leading IT projects, and they're called clinical information officers. And that's been a huge leap forward as well. Because one of the things we have to do is take these three different cohorts of people. We talk a lot about making everything we do patient-centered. And one of the things that does do is it makes us ensure that everything we do is about changing the way health is delivered and moving away from it being about technology. So how do we always put the patient at the center of everything we do? Things like creating the individual health identifier for health has been a big part of that. Every person in Ireland now has a unique number in the health system that allows us to have digital information and swap that digital information. Something you would expect would exist in any modern infrastructure. Making sure that we have that clinical focus and making sure that it is all about what does the clinician need to do their work. But something that other jurisdictions have forgotten, we talk about healthcare. And actually what we do is provide care for ill people. And what we're trying to do is look at how we make use of the infrastructure that people have built or got themselves already, the wearables, the Internet of Things side. How can we actually look at getting health in Ireland interested in how we focus on keeping people healthy rather than providing care for the sick? There's a big part of trying to change the way we work. There's a big push at the moment across the world to actually personalize health care. And one of the things Ireland can do is move away from that and actually put the context to healthcare instead of personalization. Ireland will be one of the first countries in the world in this year to sequence the genome of children under the age of five who have suspected epilepsy. That means we'll save 90 lives and 5 million euro just by sequencing the genome of kids under the age of five who last year in 90 cases died. And it's about the contextualization of technology in healthcare that matters so much to where we're going. We were talking to some guys from the States recently, though, and about how we make sure we get that, the scary line of sharing information right. You can now download a, an app in Walmart that you can link to your Facebook, your Twitter, your social media, which will remind you when you walk around Walmart that it's a certain friend's birthday or anniversary. And it will suggest to you which aisle the thing is that that person might like because they've already liked it on their social media. 
There's a lot of risks around healthcare data and how close to that scary line we move to. Dare we actually get to the point where we start to have a different social cultural contract with the public about sharing information? One of the things Ireland will get right compared to other jurisdictions, though, is it will allow a patient who does not want to have digital information about them opt out. And that's massively important to where we're trying to go and what we're trying to do, to make sure that if you don't want to be part of this service, you can opt out. The big white wall is something that is live in the US, is live in the UK, and allows people who are caring for patients with mental health or mental health patients to share experiences in a really anonymized way, in a way that they decide what information they want to share. And that's an example of how a simple service can be used to contextualize where we're going and what we're trying to put in place. So something, again, that is a theme for how we start to pull that together and how we put this in place, a big part of where we're going. Some of the things that we're trying to do very much are about making that communication piece heard, getting out there the different things we're doing. Because we're trying to ensure that we change the perceptions of healthcare. And we're using technology and the IT teams and the, the business change that we're doing in that space to try and inspire different ways of doing that. So being very open and transparent, using social media platforms, publishing everything that we're doing on the eHealth Island website. So members of the public, patients, clinicians can feed into the journey that we're on and where we're going and making sure that we move that in the right direction. One of the reasons for doing that, though, is very much around building people's belief in where we go. Let's face it, the HSE hasn't got the world's greatest reputation. Ten years ago, a massive IT failure has cost no investment in technology and health for, for those ensuing ten years. The picture behind me is the business district in Singapore. 1969, the people of Singapore, the governments, the parties, the people, industry, agreed that they would create a business district in Singapore. Regardless of who was in power, regardless of direction, they would continue to work together to invest in changing the view. That's the business district in Singapore now. The difference is phenomenal, and if we can genuinely get behind the systems that we're trying to put in place and understand the benefit it brings to healthcare, then it'll give us a much better platform to build upon. An EHR for Ireland, though, the before and after picture is quite scary. Obviously, we don't want to build our hospitals out of Lego. But this is our electronic health record in Ireland today. This is how we handle patient notes. This is a room in a major hospital in Ireland where the notes in there are the notes that arrive today of patients. I was lucky enough to be in the room and see somebody come dashing in, run across these files here, climb up three shelf units, and reach up and grab one set of files. That was a set of files that person needed for one patient who was downstairs with a clinician. When we asked her what was needed, the clinician needed a post-it that was on page 109. He knew there was a post-it on page 109, but he couldn't remember what was on it. That's one of the reasons why we need to invest in an electronic health record. Because this beautiful thing, the big pink elastic band, provides so much for the health service at the moment. It's the security of data because it's wrapped around the notes to make sure that nobody can see the name. It's the data quality because it hangs everything together. It's the information governance because you have to take it off with permission before you can look at it. And it makes sure all that data is in the same place. So quite a, a scary thought to move to. But one of the things the team is strongly pushing is that this isn't a quick fix. This is a 10-year program, a continuous investment in technology, a continuous investment that the HSE leadership, eHealth Island Committee, the Department of Health, and Minister's Office have all agreed is the right direction for us to move forward with. So what we start to do is build on things like a single national lab system for Ireland and the IT solutions that are there and have been put in place. What we have done is start to put in place an ability for the HSE to work with new innovations that are out there. The HSE notoriously has been quite close to a startup organization, a new innovation, a way of working with us. And we now have this thing called eHealth for All Connect or eHealth Connect, where the first Tuesday of every month, there'll be an innovation clinic in a different city of Ireland to allow new organizations entry points into the digital health marketplace access to clinicians, access to patients, to prove direction and prove where we're going. 
and a program of work to make sure that we can genuinely step forward with what we're trying to do. And that's supported by our own health system. 109,000 people across the health service are now empowered to come forward and present their technology idea, their digital idea that can change healthcare, something that for a long time we've been not allowing to happen. One of the first presentations I did 18 months ago, a clinician stood up in the room and said, but I've got a good idea, and the first place I would take it would not be Ireland. And we need to change that because there are so many powerful, important ways of delivering care differently, and we have clinicians, we have patients, we have public groups that know how to do that and know how to do that differently. So that was a whistle-stop tour with hopefully time for one or two questions at the end. Any thoughts or queries or rotten tomatoes to throw at the HSE? Frankie, there's a couple, there's one or two here. I don't know if you can shout or whether you're waiting for them. <laughs> They're hunting the microphone. Hello, um, I'm Alexandra Whelan, um, our robotics, we're 3D bioprinting human tissue. And actually it's just a, a rather ordinary question. Will GPs have to engage in e-referrals as a matter of interest? Or will they still, some of them choose to refer people privately? So the process isn't about whether they refer public or private. The e-referral solution is across the health system. So they, the GP can do e-referrals into the public or private system. It's not one or the other. A GP does have to choose to do an e-referral, but the GP e-referral capability is now in 96, 97% of GP systems. So it's possible to do. The thing that we're asking as the HSE, and we'll start to do over the next couple of months, is to make sure patients know that next time you are referred, you could ask to be e-referred. Because before you leave the GP surgery, you will know your referral is in the hospital that you've been referred to, rather than the current situation where you may be handed the note to post yourself, or you'd be worrying as to whether it's got through the post and actually got to the hospital system. So it's very much empowering the patient to say, I want to be electronically referred. Thank you. There was a question there and then a question here. Hi, Richard. Thanks very much. Really interesting presentation. Grown your work from Irish Cancer Society. Uh, obviously, I have a vested health uh, interest in health. So I suppose you've already alluded to the toxicity of the brand. And you know, Irish water is a good example of how not to do it. And I'm just wondering, this seems to me to be a no-brainer. It seems to me to be a very good thing that you're trying to do. And I'm wondering if there's a plan before it goes too much further to roll out a marketing or advertising campaign. You know, I, and I know it's, that's why I'm phrasing the question the way I am, but I just think that, you, you know, you, you said it yourself that HSC can do no right, yeah. but here's something really remarkable that you're doing. It's a bit scary to think that we're the only uh, first world country that actually hasn't got anything like this. Um, so I'm just wondering if there are yeah. any plans to bring so, it to the masses, so, so to speak. We're a one-man marketing machine at the moment with the things that we do. Let me tell you a little story that happened. Uh, a public consultation group was held around some of the videos, some of the things we've been trying to get out there on the eHealth Island website. And the public consultation group were asked a number of questions, but three in particular spring to mind. Question number one was, would you trust the HSE with your data? And around 90% of the people in the audience said, absolutely not. The next question was, would you trust eHealth Island with your data? Over 80% in the audience said, yes, I would. When asked who knows what eHealth Island was, nobody knew. So that's the kind of the uphill battle we've got. I'm not sure whether spending health money on a marketing machine is the right thing to do at all, but I think we do need to work at how we get the message out there, the things we're trying to do in different ways. And it's ranging from events like this to the transparency on the eHealth Island website to trying to make sure people understand the different things we're doing and keep plugging away to build confidence in the work that's been done already this year. So a really good question, thank you. I think there's a question down here as well. Hi, uh, one of the previous speakers who came on just before you was a guy called Robert Carnduff from 3D for Medical. And he was talking about the electronic patient record as well. And I asked a question to him about who would own the electronic patient record. Obviously the patient would own it, own the data but how will it be hosted 
who will be uh, responsible for providing it and keeping it safe, etc. Yeah. And if 90% of people won't trust the HSE to do that, there's obviously communications to be done there. Is it going to be the HSE that is going to be doing that in Ireland? Okay, so the first thing is, is the HSE isn't creating one big database. The HSE is linking where data is currently. So that if you're in Cork today, your records will be put in Cork. If you need to go to a hospital in Dublin tomorrow, they'll be able to access the records that are in Cork rather than creating a single database where all that information is. So that's point number one to make around that. The second thing is that patients will be able to see their record and see who has viewed their record. So really importantly from one of the states in Europe who've done this as well is a patient can log in, see what has been recorded about them in the disparate places they have information and see which clinicians have looked at their record. And they'll be able to report the fact that a legitimate reason to look at that record may not have existed. So if you think back to the, to the room full of papers, in reality, they're guarded, as in there are people stood there that, that check you're the right person to look at those records. But when they move around a hospital, it's very difficult to keep that control. And we've seen recently in the news where papers have ended up in places they shouldn't be. With digital records left in the buildings in the places they are, but allowed to be accessed with a legitimate reason, with security around it from health professionals who have a legitimate reason to view them, we believe we've, we've captured a, the right way of trying to persuade people that this is the right thing to do around information. A follow-on question then from that is, if the data is going to be stored in multiple and various locations, then uh, obviously it's all going to be compatible. And is the security going to be the same in all those different locations? It will, yes. So there is something called the Design Authority, which has been created health-wide already, which sets the design standards for systems that will be deployed, information governance and information security that will be put in place. And through working with the Department of Health, policy will be created on what it means to share information, what is a legitimate relationship, who can and who can't do what information. So there's a, a, a lot of work to be done in that place. But in the next three or four weeks, all that information around the business case for an EHR will be in the public domain on the eHealth Island website with the ability for public to come back and say, I disagree or I agree with these things. So we're trying to keep that transparency and openness as a theme that flows through the whole piece. Thank you. Hi, um, my mother had a liver transplant nearly 15 years ago in St. Vincent's Hospital. She's very well, she's nearly 80, it's great. It's the center of excellence, you know, that the HSE should let more people know about. But she's in the liver clinic today and they have a huge stack of papers going back 15 years. Like, how are they going to cope with that kind of backlog for patients like my mother? And there's a lot of them, you know? Okay, so there are processes to help us capture where information has been before. There isn't an intent to employ an army to start basically photocopying or scanning in every piece of paper for a number of reasons. Firstly, the data quality of a paper record going into a digital solution is never going to bring the standards up. And secondly, just the sheer capacity to do that would blow anybody's budget around what we're doing. So there's two sides to it. Firstly, where digital records are will be recorded in the dig where paper records are will be recorded in the digital solution. And from the date that that goes live, the record grows knowing that there's paper records going back. To do it any other way is just not affordable for Ireland or any country I would propose to do.